Adios, Shane. I wanted to put this video together as a buyer's guide for secondhand electric guitars. If you are in the market or you've found a guitar that you can't live without that is used from a shop or from a private seller, here's some tips to make sure you're getting a good instrument. There's also a bunch of other things I could cover in terms of copies of other guitars and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to get into that right now. This is going to be a hardware overview on the most part about what to look for when buying a used instrument and also things to totally avoid if the guitar meets these criteria. Let's just use this as an example. This is my 52 reissue Telecaster. It has Joe Barton pickups in here and it's a mighty fine instrument. But if I was to buy one of these off someone else, I would look for these little tips. So let's get into it. The first thing to avoid when looking for a secondhand guitar is a guitar with worn frets. A little bit of wear is okay, but if you're looking at the fret and they're normally like this, and then some of them drop right down in the middle or they got chunks out of them, as in like you can see where there's definitive string lines across them, stay away from it. Also, if the frets are so worn out that they're so close to the fretboard in terms of height, don't bother. This is a great sign that the guitar's been really well played, but it's also a sure sign you'll need a fret job. Depending on where you live, this will cost you a fortune. Another thing I like to do is to see if I can do a two fret bend on the majority of the strings all the way up the guitar. If it doesn't choke out, it doesn't choke out on that string. So I do that all the way up on most of the strings from the, say the E to the G, just to make sure there's no like definitive dead spots. It could either mean the neck's out of alignment, like it's actually got a bow in it. it could mean the frets are worn. It could also mean the nuts not can, uh, cut properly as well. So if it plays properly and you can bend all the way up and down, generally that's a really good sign. Another thing you should look for too is the jack socket on a guitar. This isn't a huge problem, but sometimes the jacks can be faulty on some guitars. If you plug in and you move the cable around, it can make all sorts of noise. It could be a cold solder joint. It could just be a crappy jack. It could be a number of things, but these are easy to fix as well. But just double check if you move the cable around and make sure it's locked in there properly. Some particular jacks on guitars are so loose if you even touch the cable, it comes flying out. So make sure the jack is somewhat reliable. Like I said, if you love the guitar and it's got a dodgy jack, it's not really a deal breaker. These things you can pick up for a couple of bucks and replace nice and easily. Test all the hardware on the guitar. And what I mean by that is test the volume controls, make sure that they work and they don't scratch too badly or make any noise or drop out tap them because sometimes the problem isn't so much the rolling of the pot it's the actual if you knock it with your hand it might go clunk i had that exact same problem with this guitar at one point i had to replace the pots not a huge deal but it can just be a bit of a pain in the ass if it's something that you are playing live and all of a sudden your sound cuts out you're like what happened you tap your controls and they come back on you're like okay so i've got a dodgy pot and you go up and down and it's fine so sometimes it can be the wiring within this little chamber here, or it could actually be that the pots are on their way out. It's generally the pots. Make sure the switches work as well. Check the tuners on the back of the guitar. Make sure none of them are severely bent or have been replaced. It's not really a huge deal either, but as long as it stays in tune, and you can just do the test, bend some strings, tune it up, make sure it stays in tune. If the strings are new, it might go out anyway, but you want tuners that are gonna be reliable on a guitar. There's nothing worse than tuning up a guitar playing and it's out of tune. Another thing to look for as well is tune up the guitar and play a chord. If the chord sounds good, it is good. If the chord sounds weird and then you check your tuning and you're in tune, there's something severely wrong with the nut or maybe the intonation is out. That's not a huge thing if it's the intonation, which basically means you need to adjust the saddles here. But I've had Gibson Studios where the nut wasn't cut correctly. I was in tune until I played a chord and then I'd be like, the G string's out. What's going on with this? And then I'd check my tuning and it's fine. Play it again, it sounded out. So be aware of that. If you are going for a Les Paul type guitar, I'm not saying they're all unreliable by any means because some of them are fine. In my particular case, I've had two guitars that actually did that and one guitar that was fine from Gibson. So yeah, there's food for thought there. Just make sure if you play a chord after you've tuned up and it all sounds good, it is good. If it doesn't, stay away from it. This next one's not a huge big deal, but definitely check out what type of pickups the guitar has. Ask the seller, has it been modded? And if it has, find out what's in there currently. 
What I see a lot of online are sellers either selling pickups on their own or inclusive of a pick guard that they've then swapped out to a whole other set of pickups. That's not a huge big deal. If you like the sound of the guitar, it makes no difference. Just get it anyway. But if you're a huge pickup nerd and you want pickups wound by Abigail Ybarra or whoever from Fender's Custom Shop, make sure you know what you're getting. So double check if the seller lets you maybe take off you know, the plastic and find out what's actually under there if they let you do that. For some of the higher end guitars, I highly doubt people will go modding them. So it's just one of those things. Sometimes with strats and tallies, people like to put in their own pickups, different pickups, whatever they like to get a particular type of sound and then they sell off the old pickups. Another weird check that I've learned over the years is to do with the truss rod inside the actual neck. Now, if you bang the back of the neck with your palm, not too hard, you're not like smashing it like a Hadouken or anything. So if you're, if you're like just tapping it, sometimes they'll rattle or buzz within there, which means it could be loose, which means if you do need to adjust the neck, it may not actually grab. So that's one thing that I had with one guitar where if I tap the back of the neck, it would actually, you could hear the truss rod, it wasn't really connected properly. This is one of those things that most people will overlook, but odds are if the guitar basically plays well, it should be fine. I d highly doubt the truss rod would be loose, otherwise you'd have an extreme one way or the other. If you are buying a USA made Gibson, for example, check the serial number out online. Not all old serial numbers are listed on the Gibson website, for example, but lots of the new ones are. If you're not 100% sure whether the guitar is a US Gibson and you've looked everywhere and something just doesn't feel right, trust your gut, don't go paying top dollar for a copy. Some of the copies out there look extremely good and to the untrained eye, you might actually be picking up a copy. A good friend of mine on YouTube, Nick, posted a video which is great detecting the differences between a Chinese made Gibson and the real deal. I'll put that up in the cards and you can definitely check it out. One last thing you should check for if you can is plug the guitar in when you go to buy it and put it on a distortion channel of an amplifier and see if the pickups squeal. This could be a sign that some of the pickups might not be waxed or they might be highly microphonic and if you're a high gain player and you get on the bridge pickup and it goes Deet! like it hits a high frequency don't buy the guitar, that will absolutely do your head in. It's not always a proximity to the amp thing, it will just do it at high gain. Older, sort of more vintage wound pickups do squeal a lot, but also more modern pickups can squeal if they're not waxed properly. If you are a high gain player, play it at high gain. Make sure you don't have any of these inherent problems with poorly designed or poorly made pickups or pickups that aren't the type of pickups that should be used for your sound. Vintage pickups sound great, for a particular type of sound, not if you're a metal guy. Lastly, make sure you like the sound of the guitar. Plug it in, don't just buy it and hope for the best. Thanks for watching, my name's Shane. Please comment below if I've missed anything on the what to avoid or what to look for list when buying a used instrument. Any further suggestions or help in the comments will help those on the search for their next instrument. The used market online is huge. There's plenty of great secondhand instruments out there. Just don't get caught buying something that you're gonna to have to fix or something that might be unplayable. The frets thing is a huge thing. I've seen good friends of mine buy guitars that have 100% worn frets and they might not have noticed that when they went to pick it up. It's only at the later stage when trying to sell it, it really becomes a problem. If someone knows what they're looking for, they're gonna see those frets and they're gonna run in the opposite direction. Thanks again for watching folks. Don't forget, if you're already subscribed, click the bell. I absolutely appreciate that. You can get notifications for my channel. Share this video around if it was helpful on your social network as well. If you like what I'm doing here at In The Blues, you can also head over to Patreon and support the channel. I didn't really want to set up a Patreon account, but it almost seemed like a necessity these days on YouTube. Any help would be a huge help. And thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.